Over the last two weeks, I've systematically tested the heart rate tracking performance of the new Polar Vantage V3 and the results are, well, as you can see, disappointing to say the least. The Polar Vantage V3 is the first Polar watch with the new Generation 4 optical heart rate sensor, so my expectations were high. In this video, I'll share the results of my initial scientific testing and you can judge for yourself what you think of the results. I tested the Vantage V3 for indoor cycling, outdoor cycling, running and weightlifting for a total of 24 workouts and I'll share all the results with you. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now in this video, I'm gonna dive straight into the testing and you can search for the specs on Polar's website, so let's get to it. However, first a quick disclosure, Polar did send me this watch for testing, but they didn't have any influence on the video and they didn't get to see it before it released. Okay, let's get to it. And we'll start off by looking at the performance of the Vantage V3 during indoor cycling, which is a relatively easy exercise for a watch to track, given the limited movement and lack of tension on my arm. And on the left here, you can see an overview of the results of that testing. Now for this comparison, we'll also take a look at the Polar Ignite 3, which is displayed on the right right here. The Ignite 3 is another recent Polar watch, but this still has the previous generation of sensors, so that makes for a nice comparison. Now to test the performance, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Polar Vantage V3 and the Ignite 3 against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. Now each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the Polar Vantage V3 and the Ignite 3. Now the closer the points are to the blue line the better the agreement and the darker black the color the more dots that there are. And as you can see, overall, the Ignite 3 seems to perform a lot better than the Vantage V3. Most points are still along the blue line for the Vantage V3, but there are many more points away from the blue line, especially in the higher heart rate range right here. There are quite a few points below the blue line. We can also see that the correlation, this R value up here, is much higher for the Polar Ignite 3. We want the correlation to be as high as possible, and a correlation of 0.95 is pretty decent, but a correlation of 0.78 isn't that great, honestly, for indoor cycling. It's not absolutely terrible, but it's not great. But let's take a look at some of the individual cycling sessions for the V3 to see what's going on here. And here you can see the first example interval spinning session where we can clearly see what the issue is. So along the horizontal axis, we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis with in blue green my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red my heart rate according to the Vantage V3. And as you can see, even though often it did detect the correct heart rate, the Vantage V3 really struggled detecting an increase in my heart rate. So for this first interval, it totally missed my increased heart rate. And for the other intervals, there was a delay. So in blue, you can see the increase in my heart rate for each of the intervals. The Vantage V3 always seems to lag a bit behind. And looking at this second interval spinning session, we see this same thing. For the first two intervals, it's pretty decent, but for the last three intervals, it really struggled and kept detecting a too low heart rate. And that's what I saw for all interval spinning sessions. Now for this one, it wasn't terrible, so there was a slight delay for most of the segments, but not that bad. But for others, it was a lot worse, like this one right here. But for basically all intervals, there was a delay in picking up that increase in my heart rate, and also often a delay in picking up a decrease in my heart rate. So for this relatively easy exercise, the Vantage V3 already struggles. Okay, that's not looking great, I'd say. It's not absolutely terrible, but the older and cheaper Ignite 3 definitely did better. But let's put these results into even more context by comparing them against 80 other watches I previously tested. And that overview is displayed right here. Now the correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I'll use for this, which is displayed along the horizontal axis here. We want that value to be as close to one as possible. And on the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher devices, the better is its correlation with the reference device. And here I marked the Polar Vantage V3 in red. And as you can see, it's really amongst the worst watches out there when it comes to cycling indoors. Now, a correlation of 0.78 isn't absolutely terrible. It still shows that most of the time it's detecting a roughly correct heart rate. But compared to the competition, it isn't doing that great. But let's zoom in a little bit so we can read some of the labels a bit better. And that zoomed in view is displayed right here and in this case I'm just displaying the watches with a correlation of 0.7 or higher and I also marked some other Polar devices in purple right here. So we have the Polar Vantage M, the Polar Pacer Pro and the Polar Ignite 3. 
And as you can see, all these watches with all the generation of sensor are doing better than a Polar Vantage V3, at least on me. And that's not looking very great. Some of these are already quite old, like the Polar Vantage M, and is doing quite a bit better even than the Polar Vantage V3. So most other watches I've tested are doing better than the Polar Vantage V3. And as many of my subscribers will know, some of the best watches out there are Apple watches for heart rate tracking, but also some selected Huawei watches are quite good. The Pixel Watch 2 seems to be a good heart rate monitor too, and also some Galaxy watches are not disappointing. But let's move on to some of the other workouts. So overall, this was pretty surprising to me. The new sensor doesn't appear to do well, at least not on me. However, let's next take a look at a more difficult exercise for a watch to track, running outside. Now, running outside increases the bumpiness during the exercise. However, there's still little tension on my arm and wrist, so it's only slightly harder for a watch to get a clean heart rate signal. So let's see how the Vantage V3 did over two runs. Now this is a similar overview plot to before but now for running with on the left again the V3 and on the right the Ignite 3. And as you can see in this case also the Vantage V3 is underperforming compared to the Ignite 3. The correlation of the Vantage V3 is 0.79 which is significantly lower than the 0.89 of the Polar Ignite 3. It generally appears as though the points are further away from the blue line for the Vantage V3 compared to the Ignite 3. Though also the Ignite 3 isn't amazing here. But again let's take a look at the individual runs to see what's going on here. And here you can see the results from my first interval run where we see some of the same issues that we also saw for indoor cycling though potentially a bit less severe. So for instance for this segment right here and potentially also right here we see a delay in it picking up an increase in my heart rate similar to what we saw for cycling indoors. But we also see other issues. For instance, here in the beginning, it really messes up a bit. So I had a decrease in my heart rate, it detected an increase in my heart rate. And in other moments, it's just a bit noisy, I would say. So like here, for instance, it's just some BPM too low. And also right here, it didn't fully detect that dip in my heart rate. And looking at this second run, we see more or less the same thing. Sometimes when there's an increase, it detects a decrease. Here it fully missed a decrease in my heart rate. And right here it showed a delay in picking up a decrease and also a delay in picking up an increase. So overall, this looks quite messy. Now this is a similar overview plot to before, but now for running with again the Polar Vantage V3 marked in red and the Polar Ignite 3 marked in purple. Now there are fewer watches in here since I only recently started running, but as you can see also for running compared to most watches out there, the Polar Vantage V3 isn't doing great. Now I wouldn't say it's terrible, some other watches are actually quite close to it, but there are definitely better watches out there. And this in this case actually includes the older Polar Ignite 3, though I have a limited amount of data for this one. However, let's now look at the performance of the Vantage V3 during a much more difficult exercise for a watch to track, cycling outside. Now cycling outside increases the tension on my arms because I have to hold on to the handlebars and there's also much more movement and bumpiness making it much harder for the watch to get a clean heart rate signal. I tested the Polar Vantage V3 for a total of 15 bike rides. However, first a quick side note, if you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe, like and comment on this video. That would help me get access to watches much sooner. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's take a look at the performance of the Vantage V3 for cycling. And again, this is a similar overview plot to before, but now for biking outside. And as you can see, the Polar Vantage 3 and Ignite 3 both aren't amazing. There's quite a few points away from the blue line, but the Vantage V3 is definitely worse than the Ignite 3. You can see that the correlation for the Vantage V3 in this case is 0.34, which is really low. The Ignite 3 has a correlation of 0.65, which also isn't great, but definitely a lot higher than we see for the Vantage V3. We can at least see that for the Ignite 3, most points are still on or close to the blue line even though there is a big cloud of points below it but for the Vantage V3 especially in the higher heart rate range most points are below the blue line indicating that quite often in the higher heart rate range the Vantage V3 detected a too low heart rate but here we actually need to look at the individual bike rides to see what's going on. And here you can see the first bike ride I did where there's a very poor agreement between the Polar Vantage V3 in red and the Polar H10 in blue. You can see I had several increases in my heart rate and none of these were detected by the Vantage V3. And this is what we see for many bike rides. The Vantage V3 just really struggles. But let's go to the next one. 
this bike ride right here basically shows the same patterns. The Vantage V3 keeps detecting a too low heart rate for the entire ride. And this is what we also saw in the overview. Now there was basically only one bike ride that was better than all the others and that's this one right here. So here you can see that at least for part of the ride the patterns match between the Vantage V3 and the H10. So we can see that right here, right here and right here. But still for part of the ride it wasn't that good. So here, here and here. And if this is the best the Vantage V3 could do out of all the 15 bike rides, that isn't looking very good. Most bike rides look like this where for the entire ride the Vantage V3 keeps detecting a too low heart rate. Now again, this is a similar overview to before with again the Polar Vantage V3 marked in red and in this case the Polar Pacer Pro and the Polar Ignite 3 marked in purple. And as you can see, both the Ignite 3 and Pacer Pro are doing significantly better than the Polar Vantage V3. Both of them are actually performing quite similarly to each other but quite a lot better than the Vantage V3. All of them are not amazing by any stretch, most watches are doing better than all three of them. Now, I'm repeating myself saying this but I am surprised that the Vantage V3 is doing worse than these older watches. But I should also say that I hope with future software updates there will be a significant improvement of the Vantage V3 and it could even become better than these other watches if the hardware is indeed better in the V3 and it's just a software issue but let's see. Now again, some of the best performing watches out there for cycling outside are Apple watches, but also some Huawei watches. And I'm also quite happy with, for instance, the Google Pixel watch. Finally, let's take a look at the weightlifting, which is generally one of the most difficult exercises for a watch to track because of the extremely high tension of my wrist and arm during each set. And again, here we have a similar overview plot to before, but now for weightlifting with again, the Vantage V3 and the Ignite 3. And in this case, both aren't doing that amazing, but they are performing similarly. So both the Vantage V3 and the Ignite 3 have a correlation of around 0 0.55, 0 0.6. I wouldn't say that's really that different. You can generally see that in both cases, there's quite a few points below the blue line, indicating it detected a too low heart rate. But let's take a look at the individual weightlifting sessions to see what's happening. Now again, a similar overview plot to before, but now for weightlifting. And you can also see right here that similar to for biking outside, the Vantage V3 mostly detects a too low heart rate. So for most cases, the red line is below the blue line. So the Vantage V3 wasn't able to pick up on these peaks in my heart rate, which represent each set that I did. And that's also what we see for the other weightlifting session right here. Most of the peaks in my heart rate are missed by the Vantage V3. So I really cannot recommend it for weightlifting. And again, a similar overview plot to before with the Vantage V3 in red and the Polar Ignite 2 and Pacer Pro marked in purple. Now, similar to what we saw for cycling, the Polar Ignite 3 and the Polar Pacer Pro are performing about the same and both are doing a tiny bit better in this case, so not a whole lot, but still a bit better than the Vantage V3. All of them are at least on me amongst the poor performing watches though. But then again, I would generally not recommend using a watch for weightlifting. The majority of watches out there isn't good enough for use during weightlifting. I would generally recommend using an ECG chest strap. If you do really want to use a watch for weightlifting, basically the Apple watches are my recommended devices and potentially any other watch out there with a correlation of 0 0.9 and preferably 0 0.95 or higher. It's really up to you, but if heart rate monitoring during weightlifting is really important to you, an ECG chest strap is the most accurate way of doing this. Polar themselves also recommend using an ECG chest strap for things like weightlifting, where there's a lot of tension on your wrist and your arm. So that doesn't look too good for the Polar Vantage V3. All the older Polar watches did much better for all exercises, except for maybe weightlifting. Yes, some of these other watches are also much lighter, but I don't think that's the issue here. I was even afraid it might have difficulty with my left wrist for some reason, so I also tried wearing it on my right wrist and it didn't make any difference. I do have hopes that the new hardware in the V3 will actually prove to be superior to the old sensor and that all these issues are software issues and that with updates over time they can be improved. And this definitely isn't unprecedented. For other brands we've seen major improvements with software updates. Still, the results I got were really surprising and disappointing to me. I'll also be testing the sleep stage tracking and GPS tracking of the Vantage V3 and I'll share those results in my full review. Also, I definitely recommend watching other reviewers since these are just the results I got on my particular physiology. Now, if you do decide to get a Polar Watch, a Whoop Strap, an Aura Ring, another device or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, and you want to potentially save some money and at the same time support the channel, there are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. In the meantime, you might also be interested in this video where I test the Coral Space 3, which is a great budget smartwatch, or maybe you're interested in my general recommendations for sports and health tracking. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.